EverlyWell is digital healthcare designed for you, all at an affordable and transparent price. To take your at-home lab test, simply collect your sample and use the included prepaid shipping label to mail your test back to a certified lab. Your physician-reviewed results will get sent to your phone or device in just days. Get 20% off at everlywell.com slash holly. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Now, if the idea of watching your partner have sex with somebody else turns you on, or even if you're just curious about this, you're going to love my guest today. She is the original slutty suburban Texas hot wife who turned her real life kink into a career that launched her into the 0.06 top percent of OnlyFans. Let's welcome to the show, Holly Hotwife. Thanks Hi. for having me. Thanks for coming. Um, first off, I just want to say your name's awesome. Thank you. Holly's great name. Yeah. Um, I know every Holly I know is a spectacular person. My so. husband actually came up with it. Really? Yeah. So Holly's not your real name. No. Okay. Well, it was a good choice. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying. He, he, he chose well. <laughs> so um, not everybody knows what hot wifing is, but it is a lifestyle. So let's start off by having you explain to people what exactly we're talking about when we're talking hot wife. So a hot wife is, a, it has to do with a married couple, husband and a wife, um, and the husband encourages and um, really wants her to go out and have naughty fun with, you know, other people, girls, guys do, you know, naughty dares and just kind of be as, uh, sexually promiscuous as possible. Um, all while having, you know, consent from him, my husband, uh, we keep in, you know, very good communication. There is a cuck holding situation or a stag situation, which is the guy's part. Um, my husband is a stag. He's on a cuckold. So the cuckold part is the more, uh, kind of demeaning, kind of holding it from him to turn him on. Some guys really like that, um, for me to go out or for the hot wife to go out and have sex with someone and not tell them until like, they're just going to, you know, burst, you mm -hmm. know, often um, making them watch the scene. Exactly. Like, yeah. And, and kind of holding it like against them or, uh, more of the demeaning part, the stag, which is my husband. Um, he is, he just loves to hear about it. So I'll go off and do my, my, you know, naughty sex driven, you know, wild fantasy thing. And then whenever I go back, I call it coming home. Some call it like reclaiming him and I have the most passionate wild sex after because we'll watch a video of what I've done or we'll talk about what I've done and it really turns him on and um, he likes like the edging experience so the whole time I'm gone he's like it's in his head and he's just fantasizing about you know what could be happening and then whenever I get home it's you know the the coming home part is like the reclaiming the uh the wife Mm -hmm. So that's what a hot wife is. Wow. Yeah. And is this the, is your husband the first person that you've had this kind of relationship he with? Is, yeah. And so how did that start? Like, was that something that he had always fantasized about? You had always fantasized so about? So it really started about, um, like the lifestyle. Uh, I didn't really know what the lifestyle was. I was always kind of a promiscuous teenager. Um, I actually got pregnant and married at 18 years old and was married for 10 years and like had three kids and never even knew about any of that, but from you know, like 15 to 18, I was promiscuous and just had a lot of fun, like exploring my sexuality. I was, uh, into like lesbian relationships and then, you know, the rest were just friends and boyfriends and stuff like that. Um, and then whenever I first met my husband, our first night, uh, seven years ago on like the 27th of this month, actually, um, it'll be our seven year anniversary. That first night we actually ended up having a foursome with another couple, total accidental, like he didn't set it up. It just kind of happened. And it was our first date. So like at the, the next day, cause we slept, you know, together that night with the other couple in the morning, I was like, can we do this all the time? Like if we, if we start dating, can we do this all the time? And he was like, yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's boundaries and stuff that, you know, we need to go over, but, uh, that's, he's, he was in the lifestyle before. Right. And I just thought that I was just sleeping with all my friends really. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, he, he introduced me to it. And ever since our first date, we've been, um, you know, pretty much hot wifing. Yeah. 
So how did you guys, you said that there's got to be boundaries and stuff like that. Can you explain how that works? Yeah. So, um, you know, he would, you know, say a fantasy or I would say something that I really wanted him to do or, or for me to do and ask if it was like, okay. And in his eyes and if it would make him feel weird, or he would ask me to do something, if it would make me feel weird or if I really liked it. Um, so you just kind of like, it's a lot of communication, a lot of honesty, just a lot of trust and, uh, verbally speaking out your fantasies and you just um, see if the other person is okay with it. And you, there's always going to be, you know, bumps and uh, things like that down the road, but you just kind of like talk it out and see where everyone is comfortable and you just go on from there and you just grow, grow, grow. Right. Yeah. Now, does he go off and sleep with other women without you? He, as well? He's allowed. He doesn't do it as much as I do because I'm not like the, um, we, how do you explain it? He would much rather me do what I do. He would much rather have me there. He has done it before, but it's very, very, uh, like less often than, than I do. Okay. Um, it's just the fantasy that he has for me. Mm -hmm. He is allowed and he, you know, as long as he communicates what he's doing and, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, step on any boundaries that we have, then yeah, he's totally allowed to do that. Um, we, we like more of a group setting whenever he's involved in the mix, mm -hmm. uh, especially because we're in the lifestyle. Right. Um, so he, he likes me there watching and I love to watch him. So mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm sure, as you know, most people can't imagine the idea of allowing or definitely being into their partner, having sex with other people. Why do you guys feel like that works for you? Uh, I really think it just depends on personalities. We don't really have uh, like jealousy issues or insecurities. Whenever I first met him, I had a lot of insecurities just from my um, my marriage of 10 years. It was uh, abusive and uh, my ex-husband was a narcissist and he really just put me down and made me feel like I had no self-worth, no value. And whenever I met uh, Vincent, he just built me up. He made me feel like a queen and that I was worth something finally, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, it just got to a point where there's, there's just like a respect, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have spoken to other people who are in the same kind of lifestyle situation, you know, whether it be the cuckolding thing, like you mentioned, where the guy likes to actually watch mm -hmm. his wife get fucked by other men or the hot wifing situation where he just wants to hear about it. And from what I've been told, the idea is less around like wanting to, because some people think it's like only a degrading thing. Like right. you just want to be put down because like this guy can satisfy your wife and you can't. Right. But from some of the people that I've spoken to, it's actually more about the idea that like their wife is so beautiful and hot and desirable that all these other people want them. And one guy even said to me that like, he's like, my wife is so gorgeous and sexy. Like, why wouldn't I want to share her with other people? It's That's almost exactly like you want says. to take other people, you buy this like hot car and you want yeah. to take other people for a ride in your car That's because you're like, you have to check my car out. Yeah. That's what he says all the time. He goes, I have a porn star for a wife. Not, not like even before I was a porn star, mm -hmm. he would always say, I have a, the hottest woman in the world. Why would I not want to share? And he, he likened it to like, uh, he said a car one time and then he was like, you know, I have this cool like Lego set. Why wouldn't I want to like, you know, show it to my boys, you know? <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's the same. It's not the degrading aspect. It's like, look what I have. And it's kind of the trophy thing or whatever, mm -hmm. but it fulfills his fantasies. It fulfills mine. So there's nothing like disrespectful about it. And, um, it's very, it's comfortable to us. You know, you mentioned that he, your current husband, Vincent has really built you up where your previous husband really kind of cut you down. Do you think the a part of that aspect is the fact that like he wants to share you with other men. Has that brought you confidence that like he thinks you're so gorgeous that he wants other men to have sex with you and then other men also find you attractive? Is that part of it, you think? It, it kind of is part of it. But like I said, like whenever I was 15 to 18, I had I, I had a very good self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I knew what I had. Um, uh, I don't know if, you know, we haven't really touched on the subject, but, uh, at the age of 15, I was raped and, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to take the power back. Mm -hmm. And so when, after that had happened from, you know, after that happened, then 15 to 18 years old, um, I was like, you know what, uh, instead of being like really upset about it and, um, you know, instead of it creating turmoil, I, kind of like made it into a power. Mm -hmm. I was like, now it's my decision. And now I, now it did make me a promiscuous slut, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I had that before. 
uh, I met my ex-husband. I mm -hmm. had that self-confidence. And then I totally lost it in those 10 years with him. Mm -hmm. And then now whenever I met my now husband, uh, he brought that back into me. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it is what I used to be. So uh, it's not so much that I... Uh, created that with him. It's like I lost it for those 10 years. And then he just brought that back and built me back up to where I was right. um, and probably even more. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think that um, this kind of like sexual lifestyle um, makes your relationship stronger in a way? It does. Yeah, I think so. Because uh, there's so much communication. There's so much honesty and trust. You know, we can pretty much talk about anything. Um, oh, I say pretty much. We, we talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes it takes a little like pushing, you know, and like trying to get it out of each other because everybody has, they want to have this individuality, you know, and then some things are kept secret for that individual individuality. But there's also this, I have a best friend, a husband, a teammate, you know, we're parents together, like all of this stuff. You share that so that you can grow, grow, grow. If we're stagnant in our relationship, we're not doing anything. If we're taking, you know, back steps, we're not doing anything. You, the moment you open your mouth and confess like a fantasy, um, it, it, you're taking a step forward and that's mm -hmm. how our relationship grows. Yeah. So. I mean, from my experience of talking to so many swingers and even like psychologists who've studied swingers and swinger lifestyles, it just seems like that kind of force level of communication has just been so beneficial for the relationship it because really is. in so many relationships, you know, there's so much shame around sex right. and people are afraid to talk about sex to each other. They're afraid to talk about what they want. Um, you know, so often the husband or the wife will have fantasies that they don't feel that they can reveal sure, to their yeah. partner. And then they end up acting out that fantasy in a kind of, um, you know, a dishonest way, which right. is terrible for the relationship. Yeah. So yeah, that makes bad. sense to me. Yeah. So how did you go from deciding to be in the lifestyle to actually making content online? Um, so you remember Tumblr? <laughs> yes. Okay. So whenever uh, Vincent and I first started dating, uh, Tumblr was like the big social media thing and it was not um, censored like it is now. And uh, we, we worked like an hour away from each other and throughout the day, because we're like horny perverts, you know, we'd sex each other and stuff like that. And he would always kind of like make dares for me. Um, and so our social media platform that we were on allowed that, which was Tumblr. Um, and he, we had kind of gotten a following because he would like post the dare for the day of me or for me. Um, you know, like I want you to, um, try and drag your boss into the stairwell and like flirt with him. Even though it was on video, it was the thought of just me, like just being naughty and like doing something sexual that day. Um, or it was masturbate on the way home and try and get like a truck driver to like see you, mm -hmm. you know, which is super dangerous by the way. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the Tumblr following just grew and grew and grew. And, um, it kind of like, we just got this huge following of fans and they were starting to create dares for me every day and, uh, different names that at that time, it wasn't porn names, but it was our handles, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, they, they would just create all of these like fantasies for, and dares for me to do throughout the day. I'd, I'd be doing like five or six a day, you know, I'm trying to do all my work. Um, but it was like, uh, you know, take a toy cause I had a cubicle, take a toy to your cubicle and, uh, you know, take a picture of you with the toy in your, you know, up, up your dress, you know, and, and then we put it on Tumblr and this, we just got this huge following. I bet. And then my husband was like, you know, we can make money off of this. I've been modeling since I was 15 mm -hmm. and whenever, I uh, got with him seven years ago, um, he was like, let's do some, you know, erotic modeling, some like nude modeling. And I'm totally okay with that because I'm very sexually free and fine with my body. Um, and so the, like the transition into what I was and then, you know, the, the Tumblr dares and the erotic modeling and stuff like that. Um, he said, you know, you should get on, um, like my free cams and start doing some webcamming. And I was like, I don't even know what that is. What is it? And so he showed me a couple of girls doing their, their webcamming at home, very safe, uh, you know, making tons of money and just sitting there talking to guys and girls and having fun with their body, you know, or, or just being there for someone, you know, mm -hmm. just talking to them, making them feel like you have a friend, you know, and 
I made a killing. <laughs> and so that was kind of the, the first step into uh, get, you know, monetizing what we like to do. Right. And so. then when did you switch over to OnlyFans and how did you get it was yourself? About six years or yeah, I think it was about six years ago. So um, I don't know when OnlyFans started, um, but it was kind of in the beginning, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, it took a while to get where I am, mm -hmm. took years. Um, so, but yeah, it was, you know, about six years ago, but it was, uh, I did my free cams and then started like mini vids and then only fans. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned when we were talking earlier about like this really wild scene that you did mm -hmm. that kind of like launched your career. Can right. you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So it was my very first time on my free cams and I didn't really like understand like the rules. I just saw like what a couple of girls, uh, you know, I watched them do their own, um, streaming, you know, uh, camming session. And, um, it, I love the dare thing. I'm, I'm kind of competitive. Yeah. I, I got that. Sense. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I love the riskiness of a situation that that's what turns me on. And, um, uh, I was on, I was camming one night. It was the first night that I was doing it. And, um, I had a bunch of, uh, I don't want to call it customers, but, um, Fans, I don't know what to really call them, but a lot of people asking, hey, you should um, order a pizza and answer the door topless. And I'm like, topless? Why not do it nude? You mm -hmm. know, I was like one step you, further. Yeah. You're was, <laughs> so I don't know if you know what a yellow a yellow wall is on my free cams. It's where mm -hmm. um, a yellow walls. You, you tell your uh, fan base, you're like, OK, if I do this dare, I want to see, you know, a yellow wall from each and every one of you. And that means whenever they send you tokens, um, it, it creates like this yellow, like highlighted, um, like this whole wall. And as long as it keeps going, you just like keep on going with the dare. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so they just kept this, this wall going. So I called the pizza place, ordered a pizza, uh, got it nude, you know, delivered to the house, answered the door nude. And, um, I actually invited the guy in while I, I was like, here, come on in, let me go set this down so I can sign it. You know, I, I didn't have like a pot, you know, anything so on me. And he was, he was surprised, but he, <laughs> he was cool. <laughs> he was the average Joe looking guy. Yeah. And, um, he, you know, kind of followed me into the house. I set the pizza down, you know, I, it was, you know, writing on this before like DoorDash and right, you know, all right. that stuff. Um, so went to go sign the thing. I was like, actually come in, come in my living room. And it was just like around a little wall. And, uh, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here on my, my cam show. Um, I was wondering if you might want to like, you know, finger me or eat my pussy, like right before you go. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we made like a, a little film. So little did I know you're not supposed to have anyone on camera. That's not signed up for right. my yeah, yeah. cams. Of course. And, um, but the whole time my, my yellow wall is going ding, 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 ding. It's like, it sounded like a casino. Yeah. And Cause these people were like, oh my God, we've never seen this before. Yes. Yeah. This, this isn't a setup. We just heard her like call. Yeah. She's, it's her f very first night, you know? Yeah. And, and on my free cams, if it's, if you're a new model, they like feature you like at right. the top of the, right. um, of their page. And so, I mean, it was just going bananas, bananas. And to me that like, it's like cheerleaders in the background, do more, do more, do more, you know? <laughs> so it just, it just like, um, pushed me into like, you know, going further, going further. So I like got a condom out, put, he had a little tiny penis. I put the, I only had a Magnum. I'm like, I put it on and it kept like slipping off. And I like bent over the back of the chair and oh, he was no. like trying to fuck me. It just kept, you know, trying like coming off and I was like, it's okay. And I think I, I don't even remember how the scene goes, but it just kept getting wilder by the second. <laughs> and, uh, I think he came either in the condom or in my mouth or something like that. It was so long ago. It was like six years ago. Um, but it was like the wildest thing ever. So my free cams like waited until they got like all their money, you know, yeah. and that, it was like the end of the night. Cause I think it was like an hour after the pizza guy left that I like shut it down. I was like, okay guys, you know, that was so much fun. Thank you so much. You know, I'll see y'all tomorrow or whenever the next time I was going to be on. And my free cams like waited. And then the next day they're like, Hey, um, you know, I know you're a new model, but by the way, you're not supposed to have any, like, uh, any, um, 
strangers or, or people that are not signed up to be on only or uh, my free cams yeah. they can't be on the film with you like they yeah. have to actually, they have to go through the right. age verification and, I was like, oh, and the model no, release I didn't know and, and I didn't stuff. you know yeah. but they were like but you're fine you know just don't do it again and I was like okay because I mean you could like that's they could kick you off and you oh, can never 100%. get back on there I think nowadays that might happen yeah, with definitely. everything that's going yeah, on yeah this was six years ago yeah so yeah. Dude, that guy went home <laughs> and told his friends the story, and I can guarantee you not a Listen single one this. of them believed him. Listen to this. So two years goes by. We're, we're still in the same city. Right. But different neighborhood. We had moved. Right. Two years goes by, and we're in a, a different house, just a different neighborhood. And I, we ordered a pizza and I opened the door. Oh, fuck, off, fuck off. No, no way. Yes, no seriously, way. seriously. And so it wasn't on my free cams, but my husband loves to do this kind of stuff. And he, he set up like a little camera and he was like, do, do a little topless dare for me, for him. And it was only for yeah. him. Yeah. We didn't have like a, we weren't going to put it, post it anywhere. I wasn't uh, filming like for anything. Right. It was just for him. And he was home and everything. He was just in the room. And he's like, just do another pizza dare thing, just topless. I'm like, all right. So he set it up like by the stairs, like on the, uh, what do you call it? Like the loft part of the stairs. And the I landing. go down and, you know, I open the door. It's the same fucking dude. <laughs> I didn't recognize him though. And he goes, oh my God. And my name was a different name at that time. Uh, it was Tiana Triple X Live. And, and I have a lot of fans who have still followed me to this day. So I can say that. But um, he goes, Tiana? And I was like, yeah. He goes, I'm, I'm the pizza dude. I'm the pizza dude from like two years ago. I was like, oh my God, no way. And we gave each other a hug. I like just threw the pizza on the floor, gave each other a hug. And I was like, well, since you're here, I was like, you want to finger bang me on the stairs? He was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yes. No lie. I didn't recognize him. I felt so bad, but wow. yeah. So that's the wild. And it just wow. blew up after that. Well, the first one, it, it blew yeah, everything yeah. up. And because we weren't even going to post that, we ended up posting it because yeah. it was just going to be a topless dare for my husband, yeah. you know? And then that happened. And, I, you know, I asked him, I was like, do you mind if I post it? He was like, no, no, no. I'm a fucking celebrity. <laughs> yeah. That is Isn't that the craziest crazy. story. Yeah. Craziest story. That's one of the craziest stories yes. I've ever heard. Yeah. And I've heard a lot of crazy stories. Yeah. So oh, it was so shit. wild. Wow. I know. I, 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 like just the smile on my face talking about it. Like I'm just like the luckiest girl in the world for that you, to happen. <laughs> I mean, I love that you think that, but I feel like this guy is oh, like, no, he's, he's lucky too. <laughs> yeah. I feel that's never going to happen yeah. to him ever. Like his life is just going to go down from there. <laughs> unfortunately, I'm like, that's his peak. <laughs> wow. I love it was that. Really cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Cause I need to like have a second after that story. <laughs> But hang tight, we'll be right back. Take action today for a healthier tomorrow with Everly Well. Their at-home lab tests can help you get the knowledge and support that you need so you can become a healthier you. I tested myself the other week and it was so easy. They send you a complete kit, including an easy, ready-to-mail envelope that you send back for your results. I decided to take the food reactivity test and I have to say when I got my results, I was so surprised. I have reactivity to 17 different foods and pineapple was high on the list. After getting your results, they also outline a two-part elimination diet to follow. Plus they offer live webinars where you can chat with a medical professional about your results. And it's not just food sensitivity that Everly Well offers. You can also take tests for STDs, testosterone levels, fertility for women, and so much more. Everly Well is digital healthcare designed for you at an affordable and transparent price. For listeners of the show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off when you go to everlywell.com slash holly. That's everlywell.com slash holly for 20% off. Um, all right, guys, we are back, uh, though I don't know what else to talk about after that story. It was so <laughs> nuts. So, okay, let's talk about professional mainstream scenes. I know you've done a couple. You're actually out here because uh, you were shooting a scene for Browsers, which you did yesterday. Yes. So maybe tell us about your first like mainstream studio uh, scene. What was it like? Was it totally different than what you expected? And um, maybe what fans can look forward to? So I've done, um, I think this is my fifth brother, browser scene uh, that I did yesterday. My very first one, I think was four years ago. Could have been five years ago. I'm really bad with uh, what years, especially after you know, COVID. Yes, I know. I'm like time to stop. Uh, I call it uh, BC before COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
the the first one, I of course I was a nervous wreck. Um, I had never acted before. Everything that I do is amateur, organic, genuine, original. You know, mm-hmm. it's all kind of spontaneous. If it is planned, it's, you know, hey, you want to meet up? And, you know, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's no acting, acting. So I'd never read a script before. Um, I've done modeling, so I was okay with, you know, uh, dressing up. Yeah, dressing up, being, uh, you know, made up, you know, with makeup and all that stuff. But reading an actual script, rememorizing memorizing, memorizing lines and, um, just like kind of knowing how it works. I had no idea. There's a lot of, you know, hurry up and wait. Okay. Cut, do this again. You know, you just, it's a very, I don't want to say a chaotic situation, but it is for the person who's never done it before. It's definitely not organic, right? It's definitely not organic, but, and what I love about Razzers is I don't want to liken it to like SNL, but it's a little cheesy, you yeah. know, the scripts are like kind of goofy and funny and fun. So I, I totally vibed with that. It was, it was really good because I'm not like a super serious person, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and the whole staff was super uh, patient and very nice to me. They knew it was my first time. And, uh, it took me a couple of stumbles about probably about, an, you know, an hour, an hour's worth of me trying to figure out, like I would have to like look at the script, set it down. We do like one take, you know, like that one line, mm-hmm. set it, you know, do a couple of them, and they would get like the best, the best one, and they would choose that one. So after about like the first hour, then I started kind of getting the hang of it. And uh, when whenever you're in like a shoot house, you know, you're not everything is going to be in order because right. it depends on what room you're in and what uh, scene you have to do while you're in that room. The uh, outfit that you're wearing while you're in it, do this, do that. Um, so it was, it was a little chaotic for me because I had never done it before, but at the end of the day, and it's like a nine to 10 hour day sometime. Well, my first one was, it was a very long day. Uh, the one that I did yesterday, I think it was like seven or eight hours. So it wasn't that bad. Um, but it's at at the end of it, you're mentally exhausted. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but it was so much fun and I got to work with great people who I've worked with every single time that I've done a browser scene since, and everyone is so nice and welcoming and they're very, you know, patient and respectful. So, and they do everything by the book and it's just a very comfortable place to work in. Yeah. Um, which do you think is your favorite browser scene that you've done so far? Yeah, wow. It's got to be with Brandy Love. <laughs> when was that? Uh, I think that was two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, scene? it was me and Brandy and Kieran. And Brandy and I were lesbian lovers. I think we were actually wives, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And it was her birthday. And I got a, a, a present for her, which was Kieran. It was, you know, a real dick. Um <laughs> Kieran, a real dick. <laughs> Sorry, Kieran, didn't mean that. That's all right. Kieran, of all people, can take a joke. Yes, he can. Um, and so I think that was, uh, yeah, it was just the whole, I don't I don't know why I would get my lesbian lover a dick for her birthday, but, you know, that's how browser scenes work. <laughs> they don't so, always have to make sense. No, they don't have to make sense. But, um, you know, she's always been kind of an idol of mine. And I got to work with her and uh, she's kind of, I don't want to say she has like that mommy part of her, mm-hmm. but she does because she was very, she made me feel comfortable and welcoming where, um, you know, I wasn't like fangirling. I was more nervous than anything. Mm-hmm. Fangirling, I, I feel like is like the giggly, like, I don't, I don't know what to say, you know, yeah. like kind of excited. I was like, I'm just going to like stay quiet and just like follow her lead. And, you know, mm-hmm. so I was a little um, shy, I guess, mm-hmm. but she opened up very quickly. And, um, you know, we still talk to this day every once in a while, you know, not too much, but um, she just made me feel very comfortable and was very uh, welcoming and, and genuine. She's a very genuine person. So mm-hmm. what what you see on, on film is that's her. Yeah. Yeah. I find that honestly, like I find that is true of a lot of porn stars. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just like, they're very like, normal. even though they're like, reading a script, we're yeah. still human. We're still yeah. the same person pretty much. I mean, yeah. there are actors who totally change their act yeah. um, and change their personality, but I, not, not her. She's, she's genuine. She's, yeah. yeah she's an OG too. Like she's yeah. the original MILF. You know? Yeah. yeah totally. <laughs> um, so speaking of wives, you just wrapped up a hot wife tour in Vegas. Um, can you tell us exactly like what happens on those tours? Yeah. So this is actually our first one. Um, I did not create this. I had a couple, uh, got 
uh, in touch with me and asked me if I wanted to be a part of their uh, hot wife tour. They wanted to start this tour where we travel to different cities and it's not just like one or two of them. There's like six or seven uh, that we got, like all the hot wives, you know, from different cities and states. And uh, our first visit was to Vegas and this was just um, last uh, Thursday to Sunday. And um, we went to Vegas and we did a, a masquerade orgy night. And then uh, the next night was a cocktail orgy night and then sluts on the strip. And uh, the, the orgies, we got all kinds of uh, male talent. I think we had like 16 the first night, male talent come in, everyone's tested, you know, verified, like they have all their paperwork and all of that. Uh, and we just, we had this huge suite and we all just went to town. And it's not a gangbang because there's multiple women. Mm -hmm. So it's more of an orgy. Right. Um, you know, everybody just all of a sudden just starts going at it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was about, I think the first one was like an hour and 45 minutes. The second one, the second night, the cocktail night was like two hours. And I think there were 17 dudes the next night. Um, and then Sluts on the Strip was all of us hot wives. Uh, we went out and like met fans out on the strip. Um, a couple... Let's see, the, the, a couple of the husbands were there. My husband didn't go. Um, he was, you know, doing family stuff at home and um, just, like, meeting our fans and hopping around to different bars. We would tweet, you know, we're going to be here, you know, meet us there. We're going to be here and meet us there. Uh, we, I think there were about eight or nine fans that ended up showing up. Uh, our next one is going to be in Tampa in July, like uh, later July. And then September, we're going to Dallas. And then um, I think November, we're doing L.A. Oh, cool. So, yeah. And we're, we're growing. We're going to like a couple of the hot wives that were here in Ve or there in Vegas. Um, they, uh, I think there's three that aren't going to be able to make it. So we're going to invite some other ones and, and more, you know, probably 10 instead of like six or seven. And then um, probably the same amount of, of guys because it was a it was kind of a perfect ratio mm -hmm. um, because you know you can only last for so long yeah, you know yeah, yeah. the girls the yeah. guys can 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 go but everybody starts getting a little you know wound down and tired after about two hours yeah. so um, but we're gonna invite new new guy talents some are going to be invited back the ones who are like a for sure thing they can yeah. stay hard they can you know come whenever they need to come yeah. Uh, they have the stamina, they're cute, they're respectful, um, and you don't have to be a big name. You don't have to be uh, an actual, you know, you can just be starting out in the business. Mm -hmm. You can't just be like a stranger off the street, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, because, you know, everybody's safety is is number one mm -hmm. priority. So, um, yeah, so we're just, we're going to build from there and it's called a tour. So we're just going to keep on going every couple of months. That's really cool. Yeah. So the night, the sluts on the strip mm -hmm. night, when you go and meet fans, just so like, I, the fans are just going out to meet you guys and like hang out. Right. Like right. they're not getting any like sexual. So, um, me and Riley Ann, uh, we took home one guy because he had his, uh, STI paperwork, uh, TTS paperwork. Okay. Uh, and so he was a fan, he was but a fan. he went to TTS. He was cool. He Which, by the way, is a industry-specific testing facility. So if he went to TTS, that means that, like, he, he, he had was some clear. insight he had, into the industry. He, right. He has say. some insight. Um, he actually had an OnlyFans or has an OnlyFans tag. He just has never put anything on there. Okay. So he, he had done his research like right. he knows what to what to do right um and he was cool he was calm he wasn't you know aggressive or mm -hmm. um pushing for anything uh he just he fit the bill right and uh me and riley took him home to the hotel uh had a lot of fun with him we made a film uh it, it'll be up on our only fans all three of ours so um it's not that anyone is include or it's not that everyone is included if you're a fan you literally have to do all of the right things mm -hmm. and from like from this podcast they will now know what to do yeah they have to be respectful number one and yeah, they cannot be pushy yeah and they have to just remain calm and cool you know and you know don't smell please like please take a shower before mm -hmm. um and, you know, have your TTS testing, have your COVID testing, um, you know, don't ask, let, let them ask you. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if, you know, any of the other girls did, but, uh, me and Riley did. So, okay. and I, I've done, uh, fan fucks before, mm -hmm. uh, and 
like I said, everything has to align correctly for that to happen. I just can't right. be a random stranger that's like, oh, I haven't had sex in a year and I'm clean. You know, I'm like, yeah. how do we know? You it's know? Also, I mean, it's almost like, you know, any guy that would just like go to the bar to try to like pick up a girl, like you're not guaranteed to go home right. with them. Right? right. Like you have to be. You have cool. to be asked. You have to be asked. Yeah. They have to be interested. Just Girls be- rule the world, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then just in this case, you have to come with proof of like a clean test right. and stuff like that, which, yeah. which God, wouldn't that be nice if like guys that you randomly met at bars, like happen to have just, that on them, right? I'm totally for it. Like, you know, everybody just start getting tested. Like, you know, every yeah. two weeks, like, yeah. And don't, don't have unprotected sex after you've already been tested. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. that's just simple, like yeah. knowledge, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, Yeah. Holly, thank you so much for coming on. This was thank super you. interesting. You're very cool. Um, that pizza story. I can't <laughs> wait to go home and tell my husband that story. He's going to be like, what? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was super, super fun. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Go ahead and plug sure. all your links. So um, Twitter, I post so much stuff on Twitter. Uh, it's at Holly Hotwife. There are no numbers, X's, anything like that. It's only Holly Hotwife. Um my OnlyFans is OnlyFans.com slash Holly Hotwife. I do not have Instagram. There are many, many, many imposters out there. I do not have Instagram. I've been kicked off so many times because I have so many people try to pretend to be me. I, I'm just, I'm done with even You're trying done. anymore. Yeah. I've had 16 Instagrams, so it is not me. Um, where else? Uh, there's many vids. It's at Holly Hotwife. It, Pornhub at Holly Hotwife. Everything is at Holly Hotwife. And I mean, you can see my face. Like if it's not my face and it doesn't say at Holly Hotwife, then it's not me. <laughs> yeah. You probably so. get a lot of guys uh, saying, hey, I sent you $5,000 because- I've never had that done. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I've heard of stories like that. Really? No. no one's tried to- Nobody sends me money unless it's in my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. And then you guys can, of course, find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm still on TikTok. I'm like barely holding on by a thread. They haven't kicked me off yet. So Holly Randall unfiltered. Hopefully it'll still be there by the time this podcast comes out. I'm always very unsure. Um, And then, of course, if you want to watch these interviews live streamed and support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'll see you next week. <laughs>